Before we get started in the nitty-gritty of this advanced sequel title, we're just going to have a recap of the most important of the sequel statements, which is select. Now you'll find in the working files a basic select syntax text file that will give you the outline as we have here. Now this gap that I have between the first two lines and the subsequent lines is not a requirement. It is simply there to demonstrate that the first two lines are the bits that do the work, they're the important bits, and the extra after this point is effectively the extra. Not necessarily superfluous, but it does more work, but it's not a requirement for the actual select statement to work. So we have select field or fields from table or tables. Then we join any other tables if required. We have a where criteria for filtering out the number of records that we wish to see. We have a group by option to group by any of the columns or fields with an extra having if we're going to filter any of the groups. That's why this is indented slightly because the having only works with group by. If you try to put having in on its own, it won't work. And then the last statement is order by. So once you've actually selected which columns you want from the tables, any where filtering criteria, any grouping that goes on, then SQL will sort the end result. So the sorting is done at the end of the process. So let's see this in action. And in your working file, you will have a SQL file with some SQL statements in called SQL examples. And we can run through each of these in turn. We see we have the basic select asterisk, meaning all the fields or columns from the table name. So that's the basic first two lines of our standard syntax. And we can run that statement and we will get all the columns, all the rows from TBL contacts. And we see the result in the bottom half of the screen. 378 records in the end. Now, if we don't want all the columns, extracting all the columns from your database takes time. And depending on how far your database is physically located, that could be important to reduce those time factors. So if we don't need all the columns, don't extract all the columns. If we just want particular columns, then we put in those particular column names. And because we've actually extracted all the columns, we can see the current headings. So I just want the FN, SN, town. So that's the first name, surname, and town. I separate each of the columns by a comma, and then I simply select all my column names from TBL contacts and run that particular statement. And you can see that that extracts the data so much faster because it's not pulling back every single field, just three fields, still all the rows though. So all 378 rows. If I then want to order this data, I add in the order by clause. So I'm using the same select, same three columns, order by the region. Now, even though I can't see the region, I can still order the data by that column. Now, if that doesn't help and make much sense, you can then add the region in, simply comma and the next column heading. And rerun, and then I get the regions as my fourth column. I'm still getting all 378 rows. To filter some out, I add in the where clause. So I could filter some out, so I only see the people in the region West Yorkshire. Let's run that statement. Same four columns, but I'm filtering the number of rows that I see. And now I actually only see 20 rows, and that's so much faster. So it is important to bear in mind that you only extract from the database those columns that you actually need and those records that you actually need. So we filter out the columns by simply naming the columns that we do want, and we filter out the rows by use of the where clause. Now I could add in a group. And in fact, our next little example doesn't just add in a group, it adds in a having and also an order by. So here we're selecting the region, so that's going to give us the region name, and a count of the contact ID. So we're going to count how many people are in each region. We're going to give the count of contact ID column a new name, which is going to be contacts. So to get that information, we need to select it from TBL contacts, grouping by the region. So all the regions get grouped together so that we can then count the contact IDs. But at the same time, we're then filtering the group by saying the count of the contact ID must be greater than two. So we're only finding out those regions that actually have more than two people within them. And then we're even ordering by that same calculation, the count of the contact ID descending. So we will see the biggest regions at the top, smallest regions at the bottom, but we won't see any regions that have less than three people. Let's highlight that, SQL, run. And I see I have Washington at 272 contacts, which is the bulk of our 378 contacts. 31 North Yorkshire, 20 West Yorkshire, 19 Tyne and Weir, 18 Teesside, four that are null. And if there are any regions with two or less, 
we don't see them in our SQL statement result. And then finally, we have a couple of joining examples. Here we have select FN, SN, marital status from TBL contacts in the join TBL marital status. So we're joining two tables together, the contacts table and the marital status table. We have to tell the SQL statement which two columns are the joins, which is the primary key and which is the foreign key. So we're joining the marital status from table C, which you'll see here, I've renamed TBL contacts as C. So I've given it a pseudo name, which means I can shorten up my SQL statements because every time I mean take the field from the contacts table, I just put C. And the same with the marital status. I've given that a shortened name of M. So whenever I want a column from M, I simply prefix it with M. So my join here is on contacts table marital status being equal to the marital status field marital status ID. Select and run. And I see everybody's first name, surname, and their marital status. One last one here is looking at two different tables. Here we're joining the payments table, which I've called P, and the weeks table, which I've called W, on the payments table, payment week, being equal to the weeks table, week ID. So we're joining them on the week ID, but we're filtering as well by the week start date being between January the 1st, 2014 and June the 30th, 2014. So the first half of 2014, but then I'm grouping them by a month value of the week start date. So there's quite a lot there going on. We've got a join, we've got a between where clause, and we're grouping by a formula based on the week start date. So the result I have here will be a sum of the payment amounts, and I will see the week number, which is the month of the week start date, which is what we're grouping on. So I run that clause, and the first six months of the year have their total payment amounts summed up. Now you'll see here it says no column name because I've not given that particular formula column heading. I'm going to say as total, rerun that, and then see I get a column heading. So this has just been a recap of the SQL select statement. The reason that we've concentrated on the select statement is because it is the most important statement that you will use in SQL to extract data that you wish to see from a database. Hopefully most of that has just been a recap. There may have been couple of new things in there, but that will now be able to take us forward into the advanced SQL that we're looking forward to.